Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming back. I really wanted to tell you all, thank you so much for subscribing and liking my videos and uh, all the encouraging comments that I've gotten from you all. So I appreciate that so much. And I promised a few of you that I was gonna make a video showing you the materials that I used and what I ended up getting for my uh, observatory. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick ride to my local hardware store and I'll show you a couple of things and make a quick video for you guys. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll be posting more videos showing you guys the build and the upgrades that are still to come. Hey guys, we just arrived to the hardware store next to my house and we're gonna take a quick tour and show you the items that I use to build the observatory. Um, it's a beautiful day here in South Florida today. It's still super cloudy, so I ain't getting much done. So I'm taking the time to make this video for you guys. And uh, this is the plywood siding that I purchased. Um, they have these in different sizes and different thicknesses. So choose according to how big or small of an observatory you're going to build. Just make sure that you lay them flat. They do warp easily. So once you put them up, pressure treat them with some paint or something. Next, I grabbed a couple two by fours. You can grab uh, one by sixes. You can grab two by four uh, sixes depending again on how big of an observatory you're trying to make, but two by fours did just fine for me. Um, if you buy them in the longer 12 foot length, it's a little bit cheaper. So had a few of these also lying around the house. I so didn't need to buy much of this, but two by fours, make sure it's pressure treated. So that way it doesn't get eaten by termites, especially if you're in down in South Florida. The corner brackets also are important to make sure that it helps reinforce and keep things nice and steady. So get yourself some corner brackets, depending on the size you need. Two and a half is just fine. Tap cons, you might want to get yourself some tap cons to go ahead and screw this down to the pavers or bolt it down to the concrete slab that you're working with. And outside corner wall trims. This is what I use to finish the edges of the observatory on the outside. Make sure to get yourself some door hinges. You're gonna need these for the doors. I ended up using four of them. I use these aluminum L's for the track for the roof so that it can go ahead and roll the two inch tire that we put on it. Then the wheels, so the wheels that we're gonna be using to have the roof roll off. And these here too are also a uh, two inch wheel. Screw eyes, again, this is what was put on the side of the observatory to help Fasten the roof down when windy days are coming around. Important to have. Some S-hooks that I use for the cabling. Uh, got these turnbuckles as well. Turnbuckles are going to help you tighten up the roof or loosen it up so that you can unhook it. Uh, the garage door sealant. This is what I use as well to cover up the gap between the roof and the observatory walls. The roof was made from siding from a privacy fence. You can buy them either completely already built depending on the size you need, or you can buy the individual slats and build it the size that you also want. All right, y'all, so that's pretty much what I ended up doing. I got a few items from here. Most of the stuff I had at home, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what you can use for the materials to build the observatory. Um, here at my local hardware store, I have everything that I needed. And like I said, the rest of it I either had or I found in bulk trash or donated by a friend who had extra material at his house. So you can do this for a whole lot less than 250 bucks. You can do this nearly free if you have most of this stuff in your house or have scraps lying around. If you just dig around good enough, you should have something like this, especially if you're a builder and like to build things. So you'll already have the tools and you don't got to spend the money on that stuff. All right, guys. So I'm gonna give you some of the dimensions of the shed, just so that you guys can have an idea of what size this is. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the length going here. Try to do this one-handed as best I can. So we're about 53 inches in width or length. And uh, we'll go ahead and measure this side here. And that's going to give us 40 inches. And then for the height, we'll start here at the bottom. And roll ourselves up this way. Part of the camera view. And we got about 72 inches in height, which is six feet. And that'll give you the dimensions of the outside of the shed. Um, as for my roof, I decided to go 
54 and a half inches in length to let's see if we can't get it to hook fifth or sorry 67 inches give or take of length or width or whichever size you want to look it up okay show you so we'll take a quick look in here let you know what i did long story short i build a rectangular frame for one side another rectangular frame for the other side i got some two by four anchored it all down with tap cons i put a support beam up top to connect the left from the right i got a nail gun nail gun the siding in Eventually, I'll put some support struts in here to give it some more rigidity. Um, on the doors, you can see I built a rectangular frame for the top half, a rectangular frame for the bottom half. And then I put them on door jams or swingers. So the doors can go ahead and open. Put two for the top, two for the bottom to give it that support. This will also prevent your door from sagging so much, especially because of the weight of it, depending on how thick of a uh, siding that you use a uh, quick tip once you uh determine the width of your um, observatory i would encourage you to make sure that you lay it completely sideways and give yourself plenty of space between the telescope and the sides give yourself a little bit of space as well on the other side obviously this is going to change from one side to the other depending on your meridian flip or whatever it may be and then you might want to also make it wide enough so that while it's inside the observatory, it also has space from the rear and space from the front. I probably could have got a little wider on the front space, but it fit just perfectly, depending on how tight you want the tolerances. That's what's going to dictate how much more widely you want to make it but i wanted to get it as tight as possible where it didn't take up so much space in my yard either and cause an eyesore of any type or bring any attention um, the reason why i kept it six feet high is because you cannot see it from the street from the front of the house it's completely concealed back here so nobody will be able to see it um, you see here where i put the track raised a little higher than the other so that the water can pour down. I'll show you there how I put the wheel on a uh, furring strip. Anchored it only at one point so it can swivel with the roof just in case things weren't anchored down so it doesn't fly away. And These are these little S hooks and this is what I use to tighten and give it some tension or to loosen it when I'm going to be using it or not using it. Um, so, but pretty simple guys i don't have build, uh, good plans for it i, I just kind of came back here one day and started cutting some wood i had wood sitting on the side of the house and just kind of started plugging and playing and seeing what fit and what worked out and this is what i ended up with so again it's been a fantastic experience to do this I mean, again you can see how everything is nice and perfectly tolerant by size so you may not have the same dimensions because you may not have the same telescope size that I do, but the process is going to work just the same if you're interested in building one just like this. Um, anchoring it down is going to be very important, but these pavers down here obviously are the first thing I threw down. I put everything around the pier. Nothing is touching the pier, so the pier doesn't get affected by any movement from the observatory and just anchor everything down so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this um, thanks so much stay tuned for more videos and if you have any questions let me know it'll be my pleasure to help you out and uh, again thanks for all your support guys have a great day